All right, so now we continue on with our polynomials unit, and we're on lesson 7b, which is factoring trinomials where a equals 1 by inspection. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an investigation where we factor by grouping and then see the connection to inspection. So if I take the following trinomials, well, I can figure out what I need to multiply to and what I need to add to and then complete my grouping method. So in this case, I need to multiply to make the outside, which is positive 6, and add to make a negative 5. The two numbers that will multiply to make a positive 6 and then add to make a negative 5 are negative 3 and negative 2. So now, if I follow through with my grouping method, then I'm going to rewrite this as x squared minus 3x minus 2x plus 6. Now what I should realize is that my negative 3x and negative 2x add to make the negative 5x in the middle. So if I've done this correctly, that should work. And now I factor by grouping. I take my first two terms and put them together, my second two terms and put them together. I realize I have a common x in the first, and if I take off an x from each of these terms, I'm left with x times x minus 3. And now if I see I have a 2 that's common between 2 and 6, I'm also going to remove this negative with the 2, flipping the signs on the interior to a positive x and a negative 3, or 6 divided by a negative 2. Now, I have a common GCF, and in this case, the common GCF is x minus 3. And I'm going to multiply this to, I'm going to multiply this to x minus 2, or the coefficient terms on that common GCF. Now, I could have done this by inspection, and to do inspection implies that we have a coefficient a equals 1. In this case, that coefficient is a equals 1. Once I know my two numbers, I could do this by inspection by saying negative 3 and negative 2 multiply to make a positive 6, and they add to make a negative 5. Therefore, my factors are simply x minus 3 and x minus 2. Now, this should align with my answer. I got x minus 3, x minus 2 by doing the grouping method, but by inspection, I could jump from my factors immediately into the brackets here. All right, let's do another example here. If I take x squared minus 5x minus 6, I'm going to have to multiply to make negative 6, or the outside number, and add to make negative 5. The two numbers that will do this for me are negative 6, and 1. If I multiply these two together, I get negative 6, and if I add them, I get negative 5. What I can do with this is because the coefficient of my a, or my a coefficient is 1, if the a coefficient is 1, and only if the coefficient is 1, I can jump right into my factors and write this by inspection, x minus 6, x plus 1. Now let's confirm this using the grouping method, that those are our factors. If I go over here and do my factor by grouping, I rewrite this as x squared minus 6x plus 1x minus 6. And now remember, the order doesn't matter in which we place these. I could put the 6 here and the 1 here, or I could leave them in this order. Okay, so if I group these, I'm going to group my first two and my last two terms. This is going to give me x as a common term in the first bracket, with x minus 6. In the second one, if I look at my second term or my second grouping, there's nothing common I can remove here. The only thing I could do is pull out the 1, leaving me with x minus 6, or a 1 coefficient which doesn't change anything. Now, finally, I realize I have a GCF of x minus 6, which I'm going to write out front. And if I write this GCF out front as follows, what am I left with? the coefficients x and plus 1, and they come together to make my second factor. Now, I could go back to my inspection and say, does this align with my factor by grouping? And I find that it does. They are the same solution here. So you're only able to do this, and I'm going to keep saying this, you can only do this if your coefficient a equals 1. If the coefficient a equals 1 like it does in the past two examples here, then we can go right into our inspection method and put in our factors in the brackets right away.
Okay, now we're going to do these purely by inspection on the next couple here. So I need to multiply to make the outside negative 14, add to make 5. The two numbers that will do this for me are 7 and a negative 2. Because if I multiply 7 times negative 2, I get negative 14. And if I add them together, I get a positive 5. Now, by inspection, we have to look and see, is this a value 1? In this case, it is. So now we know our factors are x plus 7 and x minus 2. This can only occur if the a value is equal to 1. Otherwise, we have to do factoring by grouping. All right, finally, I look at my example below here, and I see I need to multiply to make negative 14, add to make a negative 5. Okay, the two numbers that will do this for me are negative 7 and 2. So if this is the case here, I'm going to say negative 7 times 2 is negative 14, and if I add them together, it's negative 5. Let's show that if I have a coefficient of 1 here, or a equals 1, I'm going to write that very explicitly above, a equals 1 in this case. If this is true, then my factors should be, by inspection, x minus 7 and x plus 2. Now let's show this by grouping, just because it's our last example before we move on here. If I do this by grouping, I have x squared minus 7x plus 2x and then minus 14. Now remember, the order of the middle terms does not matter. You could write the 2x first and then the negative 7x second. You'll get the same solution even when you group. So we group our first two and group our last two. The common term in the first grouping is x, leaving me with x minus 7 on the interior. Okay, then I can take out a common 2 from my second grouping, leaving me with x minus 14 divided by 2 is 7. And now I have a common GCF of x minus 7. What am I left with? The coefficients of that GCF, which get paired together in their own bracket. So if we compare our factor by inspection, which was our predicted method by inspection, and the one we found by grouping, you should realize that they're the exact same. Now, on any given test, if they just say factor through inspection, this is a totally valid solution. And why is that? Because a equals 1. If a equals 1, we can do this. If a does not equal 1, then we are not allowed to just jump right to this step. That is not allowed. We would have to use the decomposition method here or factor by grouping. So they say, how do the constant terms in the binomial factors relate to the middle term and the last term in the trinomial product? Well, we know that the two constant terms, the constant terms, they will add to make the middle term. And the constant terms will multiply to the last term. And I'll put a squiggly bracket representing that the constant terms add to the middle term and multiply to the last. Now, I've been reiterating this the entire time we've been doing these examples, but we need to note that factory inspection only works with polynomials where a equals 1. If a does not equal 1, then factoring by inspection does not work. You really need to star this, triple highlight it, whatever it may be. Star this point and highlight those two lines. We can only do inspection or the short form if a equals 1, which is purely by inspection. If a does not equal 1, then we cannot do inspection. So in the example below here, we see that if we are just factor by inspection, why can we do inspection? Because a equals 1. If a equals 1, factoring by inspection is totally valid. What do we have to multiply to here? We have to multiply to make the outside or last term. This is 36. And we have to add to make the middle term negative 20. Okay. 
So the two numbers that will do this for me are negative 18 and negative 2. If I take a negative 18 times a negative 2, it gives me a positive 36. And if I add negative 18 and negative 2 together, this gives me negative 20. If I know these numbers work and satisfy the multiplication and addition, then we can jump right into our factors of x minus 18 and x minus 2. These are the factors of my given trinomial, and I've done this by inspection because a equaled 1. Okay, now it's time for you to practice here. In section A, you're going to be taking out the greatest common factor, not factoring it, but you're just removing a greatest common factor from each of these. And then when you move on to examples in the section below here where they say factor the expressions, this is where you're going to want to do the factoring method. And you'll have to look to remove a GCF or if A equals 1, like in the first couple examples, A equals 1, we can factor these by uh, inspection.